What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith, one half of the Blue Bloods College Game Time Podcast, bringing you another Razorback Rundown, Razorback Recap, whatever you want to call it. Um, Well, Razorback Nation, we had some news drop on Wednesday afternoon when Traylon Burks, the GOAT, the legend, the hog legend, uh, made the announcement that he will, will forego the Outback Bowl. He's opting out in order to prepare for the NFL draft. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned that I had been hearing maybe he was 50-50 at this point. I also did make sure to say that my gut saying that he's going to the league as he should. Um, but I want to talk about this decision because I think that if we really look at this thing all the way around, it's not difficult to see that it benefits everyone. Okay. I know this is a polarizing topic. I know there's a lot of fans who think that when athletes make these decisions, that they're being selfish and they're quitting on their team and they're doing all those sorts of things. However, I think if we can just look at this particular situation, this particular player and where we're at as a program, I think if you'll give me a couple minutes here, I might be able to convince you as to why everyone will benefit, not just Burks, but the hogs as well. So Obviously for Burks, number one, he's going to be a first round draft pick. If he's not, that that would just be ridiculous. But all, all projections are pointing to Traylon Burks being a first round draft pick. That alone is historic in and of itself. Because if you don't include Matt Jones, who we all know was a hog quarterback that ended on, ended up going on to become a first round drafted receiver. But if we don't include him, Burks would be the first pure wide receiver drafted in the first round since Lance Allworth in the early 60s, okay? Even if we include Matt Jones, he's just the third player, the third receiver to be drafted in the first round uh, in Razorback history, I think. If not, definitely since 62 or 61, whenever Allworth came out. So that's historical in and of itself. How sick would you be as a Razorback fan if Burks went in the Outback Bowl which I think we're still going to win, by the way, even without him, plays in that game, blows out his left or right knee, tears his ACL again, mind you, because he had that injury in high school, and completely destroys any NFL career he could have or just completely devastate his draft stock to where now he's no longer one of the top receivers taken, but he's kind of a end of the draft or maybe an undrafted free agent or something like that. How sick would you be as a hog fan? I know I would be. So from that perspective, from Traylon Burks' perspective, I don't blame him at all. It's not like we're playing in a New Year's Six game. It's not like we're playing in a CFP game. Now, I'm not minimizing the bowl game that we're playing in, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. However, I think for Traylon Burks individually – what he's contributed to our program, what he's done for Razorback football, he doesn't need to play in this game to prove himself anymore. In in my book and a lot of other fans, he is on the legend list. I mean, you can mention Traylon Burks' name in the same sentence as Darren McFadden. I mean, that's the kind of impact I believe that he's had. Um, And just the talent and, and football player that he is. But let's talk about the Razorbacks now. How on earth does their best player opting out of the bowl game positively impact them? Well, consider this. Right now, the Razorbacks are set to lose Burks, obviously, Devion Warren, and Tyson Morris. Those were our three top receivers this year as far as receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Now, If you look at Burks' numbers compared to the rest of the wide receiver room, he had more receptions, more yards, and more touchdowns than anybody in that room combined. Okay, and I'm not including tight ends. Okay, I'm talking just receivers. If you look at the Hogs receivers, receptions, yards, and touchdowns, Traylon Burks himself outperformed every other receiver on the team combined. So... What that tells me is that the younger guys in that room need reps. They need practice reps. They need game reps. What better way than to get an early start 
to your preparation for the 2022 season than to get an entire month of bowl practices, get some game experience in the bowl game, and then carry that momentum into spring ball. See, a lot of those guys, their first real reps were getting ready to happen in the spring of 2022. Then they'd start competing for a spot on the field in the fall, and then they get into a game for the first time, I believe, against Cincinnati a team that is currently in the CFP. So why not right now get these guys some reps that Traylon Burks would be taking? And I don't know if Jaden Hazelwood, I don't know what the rules are there, but how great would it be for him to start getting reps? But some of the younger guys in that room, how about we let Keytron Jackson, how about we let him take all of Burks' reps all through bowl practices? How much better is he going to get? And then he gets game reps like he hasn't seen all season. How much better is he going to get? How much more prepared is he going to be? How much more confident is he going to be going into spring ball? So for me, I feel like our receiver room only stands to benefit. And it's kind of a catch-22 because it's like our biggest, most productive player is removing himself from the situation, but it's creating an opportunity for someone else earlier than what it initially was supposed to be. See, initially the competition to replace his production wasn't going to start till the spring. Well, now we've got bowl season and a bowl game to get the ball rolling on that. So I just think getting everybody reps, I think that when when spring ball hits, guys that get these reps in bowl practices and get these reps in the bowl game are going to be much more confident and prepared for spring, which means they're going to have a much more productive spring, which then means they're going to have a much more productive, productive you know, summer camps and, and strength and conditioning and uh, voluntary workouts and all that stuff. And then going into fall camp of 2022, I feel like the reps they're about to get over this next month and a half or so or month, I should say, will make what they're able to do next fall that much better. Um, And then, don't forget this. Penn State's going to have opt-outs as well. This thing is going to balance itself out just fine. And I believe the three-headed monster of A.J. Green, Dominic Johnson, and uh, Rocket Sanders are about to go off. Oh, and don't forget about a guy by the name of K.J. Jefferson, who also wasn't going anywhere, who's also coming back. How great is it going to be for this quarterback to get a month's worth of reps with receivers that he's going to be playing with next year so as far as i'm concerned it benefits everybody hats off to you Traylon burks you are a legend you are a razorback legend in my book i respect your decision i hope that i hope that any team except the eagles drafts you because i'm committed to buying your nfl jersey regardless of where you go yes even if it's the eagles but hopefully not hopefully somewhere else i think the one i saw today had him projected to the Washington football team late in the first round, which that's not much better for me, but I'd rather buy a a Washington football team than an Eagles jersey. But leave me some comments. What's your feedback? What's your take on it? Are you mad? Are you you happy for Bergs? Do you see this perspective of how this can benefit our team? And as always, be sure to subscribe. You see the button down there. Go ahead and hit subscribe. All right, Hog Nation, until next time. Oh, and by the way, I will have a video up before Saturday, um, probably Friday night, of things to be looking for in the big matchup we have with OU this weekend on the basketball side of things. So be stay tuned to that. Um, that's all I got. Peace.